plowing. And tonight is going to be a little bit different. Um, you're going to see some insights that can be um, pretty revolutionary to the way that you live your life. So the truth has always been in plain sight. It always has been and it always will be. But according to the people of the time when Jesus walked the earth, he said that everyone was drunk. They couldn't, they couldn't comprehend. And today, nothing's different. Everybody's drunk. Everyone around you is drunk. They're drunk in deception. And the truth is so painfully obvious. And I'm going to put it out there, and I'm going to break it down and show you some things. So hello, Abel and Judy, and hello, Liz. Good to see you guys here. You're going to see some um, notes that I drew up. These are not professional slides. Hello, Randy. It's not going to be professional at all. Because what I did was I gave myself to God yesterday. Because when God wants to speak through me, I get a transmission. I have to surrender to that moment. And then when I surrender to that moment, it just flows right through me. I'm not even here. I am just the instrument for the transmission. And so I write as fast as I can. There's going to be a lot of grammar mistakes. There's going to be a lot of confusion on the paper that is from not properly putting together sentence structure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the transmission to you from these notes, show you the scripture, and I'm going to take you to a place of, I can't believe it's that simple. That's what you're going to say when you see this. So hello, Randy. Hello, Julian, Nolan. Amazing to see you guys as always. You guys are my spiritual family. And Shay, welcome. Casey. Good to see you. I'm going to look forward to your response here. I'm going to look forward to what happens when you get your aha moment. Hello, Sabrina. Go ahead and put your aha moment on the screen, please. When you see what I am showing you. Hello, Brian. I want to give some of you guys some shout outs because you guys are truly what makes this all possible. I do this for you guys. And the reason why I teach it is I tell, told Nolan earlier today when I spoke with him is that you will only remember what you teach. You're only going to remember what you teach. So that's what I do, is I teach you because it's a vicious prosperity cycle. I pour it out, and it comes back. So I'm waiting for the live stream to show up on my phone. because It's not here, but I'm going to switch off where I can't see you guys respond anymore. But I'm going to start going through these slides. And I'm going to break this down. I'm going to go through all of it in the way that I remember it as it came through. And it was a life-changing experience for me. And it's going to be for you as well if you're ready for it. So I recommend as we get started here, just clear some distractions if you have any. Uh, hello, Patrick. Good to see you here. And just really tune in. We're going to get going, and we're going to talk about how trust in God is the most aggressive wealth accumulation vehicle known to man. Everybody wants to grow their wealth. Everybody. What, if you're poor, you need more wealth because what you're doing is you're withholding it from yourself. And if you have a lot of wealth, you want to grow it. Well, there's no better return on investment than the kingdom of God ever. And I'm going to show you as best as possible what that means. All right, so here is some of the notes. Here are some of the notes. Okay, now this is me just flowing and channeling, and this is how this all comes out. This is how I write books. This is how it all happens. It all comes out like chicken scratch, and then I put it together because I have to write fast because the thoughts come very quick. So I wrote, to tie this to walk on water by a trust through faith as a bridge to God. And I'm going to break down the scripture of when Jesus walked on water. I'm going to show you what it means and how the whole universe operates on mathematics. So when we look at the who, what, when, where, why, and how, we know that that's the six degrees of separation that takes us away from our power through reasoning. So that is how the labyrinth of the mind works. But what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to reverse engineer that and do the six degrees of unification. And the word unification, you know, it has FICA in it, like a FICA score. FICA means fig, fig fruit. It's what, it's what covers you up. So they use this in plain sight to humiliate you. They call it your FICA score because it's your covering of your genitalia. Because when you take it off, you're exposed. So everything is in plain sight, slapping you in the face in the matrix. Now, what the word means is one causing action. That's what we mean here, one causing action. So six degrees of one causing action. So what is we are going to outcompete Satan's reason with supernatural wisdom. Why we're going to do it? Because we're going to gain riches, glory, and power, and peace of mind immediately. How? It was storing your treasures in heaven so you receive a harvest now. And when? Now. It's always now. Who? Your full potential self. The Christ in you. Where? Right here. That's where. So Jesus in action. The Bible is all code. It's cipher. Everything in the matrix is cipher. So to tie this to bring the whole tenth, it's the one and the zero. The infinite is zero and the one. That's what the tithe is. Now, I started this transmission because I started to ask myself, Matthew, why are you not doing companies that are doing two, three, four, five hundred million dollars a year? And then I remembered that when I had the five and a half million dollar mansion and I had all these things going on, I had this fear still because I got it so quickly. I had a fear that I couldn't pay all the bills, even though I had the money to pay all the bills. But you see, my consciousness had not grown to that point yet. And so when I think about that, I want you to think about where your consciousness cuts off. And we're going to do a repentance together real quick. And I'm going to be humble. And I'm going to talk to you about my own thing that I wrote here to myself. So I wrote, I now sacrifice fear and reasons for my limitation in exchange for trust to receive my harvest of good. And then I put my name. I, Matthew David Hurtado, hereby repent to God in Jesus' name for having an attitude of fear regarding my ability to pay my debts and step forward in faith for believing God shall increase me. See, that's the catch. God is all about increase. God doesn't want you to stay where you're at financially or otherwise. So according to the need, it is always met. That is truth. Anything outside of that is a lie. I doubted God's presence. So if you're not in the increase, it means you are doubting in God's presence to some capacity, which means you're divided. And I'll show you what that means. For if I did not believe the need could be met through me by God, as his presence is omnipresent, it is the one self in the infinite. He's not capable of showing up lacking anything that's required. So my ignorance of the father self, the only self, was the shadow belief that mortality exists. Now, mortality shows up in all sorts of confusing ideas, like time, as in you think you had a birth, you think that you aged, you think that you have a past experience, etc. But the truth asserts itself always now, because now is the only space that exists. God is now. You've always been here now. So anything making a claim to the opposite, past, future, etc., is a mortal belief in error. Now, I also repent for trusting in an image of a self. Now, it's a graven image, and it obstructs the flow of prosperity because I believed there was a me that existed outside of omnipresence. God, that's to be divided. Now, what this does is it removes you out of this self-esteem that you need for the increase because the further away you are from recognition of yourself as God, you are God, the further you are away from that, the lower your self-esteem is and the lower your capacity to receive. Hello, it's Amanda with Alpha Upgrade and Allow Ministries. Are you stuck in your finances, health, or relationships? Feeling burnt out, tired, even defeated? like you're older than you thought you'd be at this point in your life? International number one best-selling author, Matthew David Hurtado was bedridden and bankrupt in 2009 with Lyme disease. After gaining a full recovery and building multiple seven-figure businesses, 
Matthew teaches biblical secrets of the ages that work, regardless of age, social status, or belief in competition. During the Spiritual Millionaire Workshop 5.0 in May, Matthew will release his new book, Gold Rule, for attendees who attend this life-changing training. Why should you attend? You're being programmed by 15,000 messages a day if you live in the USA. You need a vibrational weapon, like self-entrainment technique, to produce an immediate shift in consciousness and sustain it, raising your frequency. Whether you can attend or not, head over to gold-rule.com and opt in to get a free pre-release digital copy of Gold Rule. Gold Rule is the answer to clarity, focus, and a proven action-based guide to getting everything you desire. Go to gold-rule.com and claim your pre-release copy now. So I shall now carry an attitude. Get this. Get this. The greatest president that ever walked the earth is in office right now, and I'll tell you why. Because he has no shame or blame that he will carry upon himself. He will be attacked repeatedly, and he just keeps tweeting like nothing ever happened. Because that is godly. That is what Paul did in the Bible. Paul took no shame and no blame, because that is the recognition that God is the only presence, power, and mind. Anything outside of that is a satanic accusation. So, I shall now carry an attitude of being shameless, blameless, and worthy by the cognition of honor to the infinite one, the God, the only self. I will now speak only of God's truth as victory over error. So when my drunk, like Jesus said, they're all drunk. Everyone around you is drunk. My drunk lying eyes and the distorted in fiction, the past, future, false God, ego self, through the five senses, reports to my mortal mind. This is a graven image, by the way. Casting me down. This is the fall of man through mortal reasoning. And these are the five steps right here of how it happens, according to the ancient Hebrew texts. Fear, you took thought for your life. You became confused. Five senses are confused with ignorance of the Father. You lack trust. You're drunk. You think you're outside of God. You're drunk. You have double-mindedness. You think you exist separate from everything. That's a double mind. Okay? You can't be part of the allness and not be part of the allness at the same time. The sin divides you from God. You've heard that before, right? Well, what do you think that looks like? The way back is to turn to the Father. Now look, the infinite one is God. You think you're divided. So look at the division symbol. Watch this. One divided by zero is to live in error. Do you see it? That's error made manifest. That's the world of terror. Terror is the T. It's a box. It's a right angle. It means that you're in a box through error. I'm going to show you things that are high-level understanding, things that they absolutely don't want you to know. And you better believe I was attacked today for bringing this information. You better believe that error will attack you for knowing this. So you better get the full transmission so you know what to do. Now watch this. If you are the one and the zero, the infinite one, and you try to divide yourself out of it, one divided by zero, it says division by zero is not possible. Mathematics tells you that you cannot possibly exist outside of God. Mathematics proves to you. Mathematics is the universal language of God's fingerprint all over everything. It's mathematics. You cannot exist outside of God. It's a mathematical impossibility. It's in plain sight. Now, the mortal mind, which is created through reasoning, argues for its existence. You're drunk. Wake up, you drunk. That's what I'm saying. Wake up. You're drunk. One times zero is the zero. I'm going to show you some very high-level knowledge that I learned in the Templars here in just a moment. So we're going to talk about this first. Your spiritual credit score versus your natural credit score. Perception is reality, according to your lying and deceitful five senses. So if you are the one divided by the zero, and I'll show you how this is all throughout everything around you, how the whole matrix programs you to believe this. You are in error, okay? Which means you are also in terror because the T is a right angle. It's a box. 
and anything in a box is where you're trapped. You're trapped in error, and that is the first step to sin consciousness if you read it forwards. But the Hebrew tells you to read it backwards. We'll get into that in a minute. So this means that you cite yourself. You have a self-image of yourself. You will only manifest according to your self-image. If you don't know that you're God, you do not have the self-image capacity to receive the full blessing. So if you divide yourself in your own mind by becoming double-minded, you're feeling inside of your heart. Your heart is where all of the issues in life come. Your heart is who you see yourself as. Your heart is who you see yourself as. Is with the fear of the ignorance that comes by the lack of knowledge. So that feeling, that feeling is what Jesus talked about in the ancient book in the Apocrypha of Thomas, his twin, because the universe is twinning all the time. Thomas talked about in that book, there is a language. That feeling is what we're going to discuss in a moment. Your words and your feeling, that's where your power is at. It emits a vibration. This is what the whole law of attraction half explains. They give you half the equation, but half too smart is not smart enough. Attracts more ignorance, okay? So if you are feeling that you are divided, as in seeing yourself in duality, you attract only ignorance through the five senses, which is more lack of knowledge and more five sense report of fear made manifest. Why do you think everything outside of you is becoming more and more corrupt, including all the governments in the world? Because we are holding that consciousness that is a projection of it. Because it must come to its own end. Because evil destroys evil and error always leads to its own destruction. So that's what you're seeing. You're seeing drunkenness escalating. Now we're going to wake up, you're going to wake up, and by you waking up, thousands of people worldwide or more are going to wake up just by your presence. And you're going to do that today if you haven't already done it. So fear, the vibration in me, okay, the vibration of fear that came made a manifest or a man right here. When you're divided, you've already stepped into fear. You're double-minded. This is what you think you are outside of God. That, that's the man you think you are. You think you're that manifest, separate entity. A graven image, that is a graven image. Put no other gods before me. It's a belief that God could somehow become finite from an infinite place. If God is infinite, it can never become finite. Look, division by zero is not possible. Do you see that? Division by zero is not possible. One more time. Division by zero is not possible, but yet your lying and deceitful drunk five senses told you that it is, and you fell under the spell. Subtracted out of itself, where I could be in sight of God as separate, held by a belief in all these beliefs are mortal lies. Birth, death, your earthly parents. Okay, Jesus said, if you will leave your parents, it shall be good for you, and you know what he meant by that, right? Your childhood, your adulthood, your school grades, your credit reports your IRS bills, your baby mama drama, all this stuff. None of it is real. None of it. It is all belief made manifest through a fear in your consciousness. Now, I'm going to show you how you got here, and I'm going to show you how you walk out of it and how the Bible clearly lays it out in plain sight. And when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I never saw that before. Okay. So these fears that are showing themselves through the lens of your consciousness, you are sight see, sight seeing. Okay, whenever they say ing, that's all future tense. That doesn't exist. It's all in Babel speak. You are see, you are sight seeing. Okay, this is the the jurisdiction of the sea is Satan's jurisdiction. It's commerce. It's war. Okay, it's everything around you in the matrix. This is fiction. Everything you that you are doing right now is a fiction and you are in a shipping war. The truth is, is you exist in a shipping war that has gone on the planet for 8,500 years. That's the truth. That's what, that's what you can't comprehend right now. You're a vessel in commerce. Commerce means war. The vessel is the ship. It's the material sense of what you think you are. Now, a trust, a trust in the ocean to calm itself, as Jesus said, peace and be still. Be still and I will deliver thee. 
Well, deliver means no. D means no, no contract, no living. So God will live through thee. Be still and God will live through you. Now, here's what you do. One times zero equals zero. You see this cross right here? This is the symbol of the Knights Templar. This is what the esoteric wisdom is. This is what they knew. This is what I learned when I went to learn from them. And I'll show it to you. That's the cross right there. That is Mary Magdalene's cross. That is her symbol. It's still on the planet, and it still exists. Now, you see this right here? Jesus carried the cross and died on it. You see Jesus carrying the cross? Watch this. What symbol is that? Jesus carrying the cross. It's a story. Do you see it? Take a look again. Jesus carried the cross. It's all in plain sight where you can't see it, but now I just showed it to you. I just woken you from your drunkenness. Right there. You see what died? The ego mind. The ego mind died. The mortal sense of Jesus. The flesh. The man of Jesus died. But the eternal part of Jesus is the Savior. You see, Jesus the man carried the cross, which means once time zero, he went back to the zero. Okay? This is a shift in consciousness, by the way, to the death of the experience in drunk and division and becomes eternal life. That is the story. Are you feeling embarrassed and stuck because you can't focus or concentrate? I have a confession to make. I spent years unable to think clearly like I was in a fog. I was going through the motions, running my companies, and I hated feeling groggy and mentally sluggish. I couldn't get ahead like this. It's no secret the powers that be want us dumbed down. Chemicals, fluoride, our brains are under siege and we are experiencing lower IQs. But now there's a weapon to fight back and win. Introducing DNA Evolve, a revolutionary breakthrough in a category of cognitive enhancers called nootropics. I've been using DNA Evolve and couldn't feel better. For me, it works. It feels great to get things done again and get ahead. Try a free sample for yourself at DNAEvolveSample.com. That's DNAEvolveSample.com. Supplies are limited, so go to DNAEvolveSample.com right now. Now, here's what your five senses say. If I told you to take no thought for your life, they say, well, shouldn't you be worried about not worrying more for what you're going to do to solve all these fears you're afraid you're going to succumb to by already worshiping them? You see, that's how stupid the human mind is. The human mind is built on corruption designed to implode upon itself. It's not God's mind. It's a false fiction. So here's how you got here. I want to show you how you got in this mess. Every time you want for something, want means lack. Every time you want for something, you take yourself out of your center, which is the zero and you attempt to divide yourself. You see this? When you are in the completeness, you are the zero. Every time you have an attitude of wanting anything in life, every time I want, I want, I want, I need, anytime you do that, you create, through sin consciousness, you create error. And then you have to live in your error. Want equals all suffering and lack on the planet. Lester Levinson discovered that of the um, more uh, Sedona method. He didn't explain it like this. He didn't understand that, but he discovered it on his deathbed. And that's usually when the greatest discoveries take place. So what happens is first you want because it's based on an addiction that you have. And it comes from an identity that roots itself in ego self-importance. See this thing right here? It thinks it's important. It thinks it has power. It has no power. It doesn't exist. If three human beings... We're sitting in a room together, according to quantum physics. If you take the empty space out of them, it is 99.99997% empty space. Those three human beings would fit on the head of a pin. So you're not even here. So what are you looking at with your lying eyes? That's right. You're drunk. That's the point. You see, ego self-importance. Your ego is your earth guide only. That blocks the self. And importance is a consonant by two, um, uh, a vowel with two consonants. It means no contract. It means no port to stand on. Importance means no port to stand on. So want equals lack. 
So ask yourself this question. What did you want for in life right before you started to feel terror or you started to feel like you were off, like you were out of your peace? What did you want for? Money, relationships, health? What is it? Because whatever it was, as soon as you step into want, you take yourself out of the infinite into error and you project yourself as this some separate entity. You don't exist like that. That's not you. The whole world is filled with this. That's why everything in the commerce is to tell you to want for something that you don't have. You're not skinny enough. You're not rich enough. You're not good enough. You're not young enough. You're not. You're less than. You're less than. You're less than. You're less than. Well, what is that saying? That's saying you're subtracted. You're subtracted. You're subtracted. Program, 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 program. The matrix is programming you to step out of your God power constantly, repeatedly. So you're citing error. Now, you know what a port is? A port is a place for the lading and unlading of the cargoes and vessels. It's a place on the sea coast or river ships stop for the purpose of loading or unloading. Everything is a shipping war. Let me show you this right here. I just got off the phone or Skype with Russell J. Gould. And if you haven't watched what he has called, um, what's it called? Uh, war, um, Look up in Russell J. Gould, uh, War uh, Castles, War Castles, and watch that documentary. And you will learn, it'll blow your mind. But here, let me show you this right here. Okay, this is it. Okay, this article. Jesus talked about entering a ship in the Bible. It's all in plain sight. Everything is based on shipping channels. It's a shipping war. It's commerce. It's a sea time jurisdiction, maritime law. That's Satan's pulpit. You look through this stuff and it'll blow your mind and you will wake up. You will wake up. But for now, to want equals to feel terror. Okay? And again, symbology. That T is a right angle, which means a carpenter square. It's a box. Anything in a box doesn't exist. But when you're in a box with error, that's where you're trapped, okay? That's your prism, okay? It's a prism planet. It's a prism planet because it's the control of the mind. So error has to box you in by getting you out of your center. So this is the fall of man. The fall of man is literal, and I'm going to show you what it means. You are complete and whole as God. You are God with God power. It's in your tongue and in your feeling. But... Every suggestion, 15,000 suggestions a day are coming at you in America from the matrix, programming you to take a fall, to give away your power. And you are contracting all the time and putting your power outside of yourself, subtracting yourself from the infinite because of temptation <clears throat> that causes you to take thought for another self. So you find yourself standing in want. Want equals hardship, okay? Remember I said everything was shipping? It's right in plain sight, wake up. Hardship is a material consciousness, it's hard. It's a material-based consciousness. You think you have a material life, therefore you're in hardship. And then you come to need. Well, need is a right angle, it's the knee, okay? You're needy, you're on your knees, you're a slave. Master consciousness versus slave consciousness. So you carry your cross. See, there's Jesus carrying his cross. Okay? To the zero. Crucifixion is the lamp. Cruci means lamp. What is a lamp? It's your eyes. It's what you see. It's your sight. It's your self-image. You see, your self-image needs to move out of hardship, which means to stop seeing yourself as a material being. You never had a human life. Hue means the coloring of. Human is the coloring of the manifestation. It is error. God is the only reality. You are God. Get over it. Now, let's look at the tithe. It's a store of value. You got two boxes. You got two right angles. There's I and there's he. He equals actually 13. It's not the five senses. He equals 13. And 13 is a number that's very powerful. And 
This is it. Okay? This is the formula. Now let's look at the scripture and let me tell you what it means. Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse so that there shall me there may be me okay me at my house god saying me at my house okay now look if you drop the two right angles and you have the i and the he i'll show you how this looks mathematically if you if you drop the two carpenter squares you have i and the he okay that's you and god so that there, there shall be God at my house. And it says, prove me now, now, now time jurisdiction, here with, here with you, here with you now, me at my house, here with you now, saith the Lord of hosts. What's a host? Well, you have a domain. That's your identity, your self-image. Well, who hosts your domain? Who hosts your domain? Who do you think you are? If I will not open you the windows of heaven, that means to see. The windows of heaven means to see, to sight, that only the good is true. To sight, that only the good is true, that God is all there is. You see, this principle of tithing, I'm going to show you how powerful it is. Because God meets you at your level of consciousness. I'm showing it to you at a much higher level of consciousness than what you knew before. But whatever level you're at, it works regardless. But I'm telling to you how it works at a higher level. So you see that only the good is true and pour you out a blessing. He's telling you to pour out the blessing. You pour out the blessing as in the feeling that matches with what you are seeking to attain. Pour you out a blessing. Remember, this is all fiction. This is Babel speak. You have to be able to decipher this, that there shall not be enough room enough to receive it. That's because you're trying to receive it as this, this little fallen thing here. You can't contain infinity when you're fallen. You can only be me at my house, prove me here with, the Lord says, God is all in all. Now let me show you how you made some contracts and why this is so important to God, because God does not want you to contract with anybody but God. Hello, I'm Julie with Allow Ministries on behalf of Matthew David Hurtado. Are you ready to end self-sabotage, procrastination, and distraction? Clarity, certainty, and a proven plan of action is what it takes to get anything you want in life. Training is the answer. Matthew David Hurtado's Spiritual Millionaire Workshop is the one-step solution that finally puts you in control of your destiny. What Matthew discovered about building a seven-figure business and perfect well-being when he was bedridden and bankrupt with Lyme disease is that mentorship is success without the weight. It works. At AllowUniversity.com, you'll discover how to walk in victory. Learn how to prosper in every area with unstoppable daily habits and a step-by-step -step training to build your dream business immediately following the event, a success training for a lifetime of achievement. Walk in financial increase, living a life you love. Go to AllowUniversity.com and say yes to your destiny. Now, the Hebrew has to be read backwards. Hebrew was meant to be read backwards. So we look at the five steps of sin consciousness. We have to go backwards. The first thing is division, then double-mindedness, then lack, then confusion, and then the fear, and the fear is a right angle again, boxing in the ear, and the ear is our learned knowledge, right? So the solution is the soul volition that we move out of reason into faith, not faith here, but faith, comes by hearing the word of God. Well, guess what? God only spoke in the Bible. You are God. Speak as God knows God to be true. So speak as God to God, identifying self only as God. Knowledge of the Father is with the attitude of the cognition that God is all in all. Praise God with your tongue. The Holy Spirit is the tongue of God. The knowledge of the Spirit of the whole self. You are the whole self. 
raise up out of your hardship, your material consciousness, and demonstrate God by the feeling, by pouring out the blessing. Pour out the blessing. You pour out. It says pour you. You pour out the blessing. You pour out the blessing. Feeling. The ABC break process is the secret. I teach it. You can get it for free. Learn it. Text the word. You know, or just, just go to MatthewDavidHurtado.com. Get my book. Learn that process because that is how you pour out the blessing. Okay? I'm taking you deeper now. Feeling 100% to repentance. Okay, repentance is a turn back to the Father, which means you're not standing under the five senses or the pent. So re means no. Re means no. Five, pent, standing under the five senses. No longer standing under the five sense pentagram. Pentagram, where, where do you see a pentagram? Well, take a look. Maybe you'll see some structures that look like a pentagram. Okay, now, here's how you contract it. And God doesn't like these contracts, by the way. So to tithe your money, why it's important to tithe your money. I get all these people, the tithe doesn't mean to tithe your money. Jesus came to fulfill. They don't even know what they're talking about. They don't understand that the, the Bible is all cipher. They don't, see, they don't see anything other than the fiction that they're drunk in. Here's what it means. Through a process called transference, your money contains all of your want. Let's just be honest. You want more money, don't you? You're addicted to it. Huh? See? Because you want it. You're addicted to it, which means you're screwed. Okay? Because you're already sinning in that category. That's why God put this in place, so you could be in the fullness again. You could be in the fullness. And isn't it interesting that that verse right there, 310, what is that? That's the infinite one. It's the 10. It's right there in plain sight. Everything is. Now, God wants you to put that transference of your fear attached to all of your money contracts that you are making on a daily basis back into the zero so you stop being divided as the fallen state of man so you can receive the fullness of God. I recommend you listen to this again because you might not get this till 3 in the morning. It'll wake you up, I promise you. Put it in God's kingdom where the truth is in plain sight with you now. Now, contract. A dollar bill is a voodoo doll, okay? It's an instrument. It has a signature on it. It has a picture of a dead president. It's currency. You make a contract when you use it. Contract. Paycheck. Check means to stop or control. Stop or control your pay. You're finite. See? You made a contract. You're finite. Everything in the universe is slapping you in the face from the matrix because you're supposed to wake up. Master card. Oh, a master. Your master. Card means a charter. Bestowing legal rights and privileges. Serves as a legal evidence of them. Well, who can give out privileges? A master. And who can receive them? A slave. So you're a slave. You're making a contract as a slave. Visa means to see. You're on the sea. You're on the holy sea. The S-E-E, -E, the holy sea. That's Vatican. That's the Vatican, by the way. American Express. America means to fleece the sheep when you parse it out. So it's the express way of fleecing the sheep. Discover means no cover. You have no covering, all right? It's in plain sight. So symbols rule the world, division. Now, watch this. I'll show you how symbols rule the world. This right here is a symbol, and it's a separate plane of existence. When you go in a courtroom, the judge is always up higher, and so are the uh, people that are convicting you because it's a bank. Court is a bank by the way, and so they're on separate planes. So you want to collapse and remove all boxes and planes. But this right here is a separate plane of existence, which means it's not there. It's not there. If you're down here, that's not there. That's how it works. You're in the dark. You're confused. You're ignorant. Okay? So the financial hardship of man is with the slave consciousness that wants the lack, that has the lack want program and is being robbed with reason. That's how it works out. I'll show you how this works. <clears throat> Now, disobedience to Satan is obedience to God. Reason says, this is what the human's minds say all the time. People say this to me all the time. They don't realize, I've made all of the millions that have come through my companies because I tithe. Okay? And when you tie into the anointing with someone who has that prosperity, that becomes your gift as well. That's how it works. That's how you make a contract where God is meeting you at. And you restore the contract with God and break 
and you annul these other contracts with the world of Babylon that you're already indebted to. So you, they say this, the ego says, well, I can't live on 100% now. I can't live on 100% now. You're right, because here's you divided from the 100%, right there. You can't live on it because you're divided. You believe in another mind outside of God. You're in breach of trust. As soon as you stepped into lack and want, and you had that transference of fear that you put onto that money and you made a contract with Satan, you broke the trust with God. You have no fusion, no outpouring. You can't pour forth prosperity into the world anymore in your feeling nature because you are in lack. You are in fear. You see, that's how it works. Because you added the fear. You stepped into sin by becoming divided. You did that, you contracted. Now, ear is where man takes his information, he learns, right? So if you have ears, listen. To carry your cross, we simply become fearless. We pour forth our seed, reestablishing the trust with the volition that there is one mind, one God, one power. You can only be multiplied because you're giving to yourself. You are giving as God, and God increases itself. You step out of that illusion. There is no time. There is no past future. All of that is BS. Now, reasoning for your needs, reasoning for your own needs is about as sinful as that gets. Because what it affirms is that you are in lack of trust, which is a breach of contract with God. You're holding on to your substance, which means standing under. You're standing under. Now, look at this. I said he is up here and you're down here. This is what all the old preachers tell you. They tell you to look up to God. Look, look up. God's up, right? You see, you're divided. They're programming you to be divided right there. Because when you fell, the fall of man, look, you were God and you fell right down here. You're divided. See, it's right there in plain sight. The infinite storehouse is right here. So he's up there and I'm down there. That's what they are programming you to believe, which means they are programming you to be divided. You see, the nine is the ego. Ego is a nine. And you see the nine is a symbol of this taking a fall. See, this takes a fall. It goes from here down here. You're taking a fall. This is all deep level knowledge. This is from the Apocrypha. I want to read something to you from the Apocrypha. This is what you're going to learn today. First scripture. He is the shepherd who left behind the 99 sheep which had not strayed and went in search of the one that was lost. He rejoiced when he had found it, for 99 is the number of the left hand, which holds it. The moment he finds the one, however, the whole number is transferred to the right hand. Thus it is with him who lacks the one, that is, the entire right hand, which attracts that in which it is deficient, seizes it from the left side, and transfers it to the right. In this way, then the number becomes 100. This number signifies the Father. That is the ancient Hebrew, and here's what it looks like. The 99 and the 1. See, the 99 is the twinning effect of reality. You see, everything in the universe twins. You have these duality effects of the egos right here. You're going to seize it, and Jesus is the 1, okay? And we are going to get the 99 over to the 1, which equals the Father. So that is the 99 plus the 1. That is the regular cross. See, that's the regular cross, and the one I showed you earlier is the Templar Cross. Listen, there are two types of people in this world. People who believe they can and people who believe they can't. I'm pretty sure you already know who I am. You see this? This. Mokain. Mokain. This is my secret. You know, Probably you never heard of it because you are uh, swinging around your local coffee shop and congregate with the sheep. <laughs> What's wrong with you anyway? Hmm? So what you waiting for? Go on mocane.com and little Tony will ship you some little baggies risk free to try out. You should be killing it. You should be living like me. You should be living like me. But you ain't, right? You're missing this. This is the secret. This is the fuel to complete your mission. I'm putting powder all over the streets. 
I don't want to hear any more excuses, okay? You work for me now. I want you to be my customer. Go on mocaine.com and do the Mocaine Miracle Morning. I'm not gonna ask you again. I'm not gonna ask you again. Now you know. So what we need to do is we need to break division. We need to break fear. See, fear, error, trapped in a box, okay? We're going to open the windows, your eyes of heaven. We're going to open the windows of heaven. We're going to open your eyes to realize, real eyes, real hyphen eyes, that God is all in all. That's what happens when you break covenant with all of this world Babylonian system and you start honoring where God is meeting you in the place where you are being ministered to because that voice is reaching you in your need to pull you out of that system. It's your opportunity. So when people say, I can't live on the 100 that I already have, that's right, because you are separated. Now, Jacob covenant is what the trust is. You are the seed of Abraham, okay? You are the seed. Here's what Abraham means. Abra means it will be created with my words. And Ham is the inner part of the knee or the need, which is a need is a right angle. And so that means your words are in the box. So what you speak is what goes in the box. That's what it means. You're the seed of that, which is the only thing God ever did was speak. So we need to understand that you've got to start seizing the power of your tongue, and you've got to stop talking about things that you don't want to create because God is the only tongue. You don't exist. You're not even here. So when you start uttering things that you don't want to create, you are speaking of evil, and every word goes before God, and it is judged accordingly. Every single cotton picking word, even the ones that you say quietly in your head. But you can't do it because mortals, mortals cannot control their tongue. So what are you going to do? Stop identifying as a mortal. You are not a mortal. You never had a human material life, period. Speak. Are you speaking about being a vessel with your cargo and lading as a hardship? as a material person outside of God's presence? Or are you speaking from wisdom, the tongue of the Holy Spirit, cognizing <coughs> the cognition that God is all in all? Now, let's look at what it means to walk on water. This is going to blow your mind. If your mind isn't already blown yet, you must be asleep beyond repair. But I'm going to show you what it means when Jesus walked on water. This is coming from John 6, okay? Let me show you what this means. And when even was now come, you can see right here, now, okay? His disciples went down unto the sea. I told you that, the sea. Look, see, down, you fell, you took the fall of man down to the holy sea. This is the holy sea down here. This is the world of commerce. This is the fallen state of reality, the fallen state of man. You're divided. That's what it means, okay? Entered a ship. You see, everything is shipping wars. It's in plain sight. Everything is shipping wars. Okay? Went over to the sea, and it was now dark. You see? The sea. Okay? When you try to go over, when you try to go over, you see this? Over, it's dark. Because you're living through the five senses. You can't. This is why all of these old-timey preachers are preaching a God clothed in human imperfection. They are preaching what they can't comprehend because they're in darkness of the five senses. Right here, they're trying to go over, okay? And Jesus was not come to them. Okay, now watch this. And by the sea arose by reason. Reason. The sea arose by reason, okay? Reason. I'm reasoning. Here's what reason means. Rhea means the state of mind accompanying an act which condemns the perpetrator to criminal punishment. It's a guilty mind, and the son means descendant of. So you're the descendant of a guilty mind when you start reasoning. You're in the sea. You're reasoning, which means you're divided. You're living in fiction. And then look what it says. 
it says a great wind that blew. That's the words out of your mouth. Because you're reasoning, you're speaking of evil. You're blowing a lot of wind. You know, it's that fart box in your face that you're blowing all that crap out. I'm sorry to say it like that, but if you keep talking about it, it's not going away. you got to stop doing that. You have to stop doing that. And I've been guilty many times when I've come unconscious to the pain body. you got to stop doing that because you get what you speak. Now, the five senses. Okay, watch this. So when they had rowed about 20 or about five and 20 and 30 furlongs, okay? So you've got the five and you've got the 23. The five senses through the death and rebirth. This is all cryptic, cipher. I'm showing you the cipher. So you got the five senses going through the 23, the 20 and 30. See, two, three. That's the death and rebirth. They see Jesus walking on the sea, okay, right here, walking on the sea. See, he clothed himself in material consciousness so he could be visible to them. Drawing nigh onto the ship, and they were afraid. You see, by that time, they were already in fear. But he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. See, he walked on the, he walked on the water, and water means flow and currency, clothed himself in material form, which is fiction. They were afraid, which means they're already divided. They already took the fall and says, be not afraid. That's what the verse means. That's what the scripture means right there. So, willingly received him. Now, verse 21, they willingly received him, which is the trust. They came back into the trust, okay, into the ship. Immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. See, what this means is if you accept your divinity, if you accept that you're God and receive what Jesus said, receive it. That you are shameless and blameless and sinless and formless, basically, and you are the expression of the perfect man from the perfect father. God is the perfect seed, and you are the son, the descendant of that perfect seed. So you are, it's impossible to be incorruptible. Look, I'll show you the math. Okay? Let me show it to you one more time because you're drunk still. Okay? One, if you think you're going to divide yourself from the infinite, it says it is not possible. And it also says that you are going to experience error, error, your engine lights on, okay? Hi, I'm Daniel. I attended Matthew's workshop because I wanted to use the law of attraction and I wanted to learn how to increase my vibration and use the law of attraction to create an online business and bring more income into my life. And through the weekend, I learned how to let go of beliefs and karma. And then the self-entrainment technique allowed me to step into this world, to show up as the person that I want to be. And this has kicked off an amazing transformative process in my life. It has transformed every facet of my life. It has been a, a, a rapid, high-speed journey of personal development and growth that, to me, is worth more than any amount of cash whatsoever. However, having taken that journey, I have now come to the point where, as we speak, I am launching a new online business. In fact, I'm launching two brand new online businesses, and I feel absolutely positive that they're going to succeed and that life is going to move forward. And so this workshop has enabled me to come to the place personally where I can actually step out in power instead of being timid. and. Uh, present value to the world and also to allow that value to flow back to me because I no longer have those blockages in my life. So, Matthew, thank you so much for the workshop. Because it doesn't exist. So immediately now the ship was at the land, whither they went, okay? The land, okay? So it's a box. The L is a box. It's a right angle and, which means in the box. So the one and the zero right there. It's all cipher. And now you know what it means. Infinite self cannot become a finite. That's the Adam dream of consciousness. 22 is a spiritual number, and it goes on. The, du the du 
whatever, of the following. Okay, let's look at 22. Now I've got to read that to you. So 22, let's see, uh, 16 through 21. Um, I don't know if they have 22. Let's take a look. Right there. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea, <coughs> okay, saw that there was no other boat there, save the one whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat. See all this crap? It's, it's all babble. But that his disciples were gone away alone. So what it means is none of it was ever there. It's only God. It's all just a big smoke screen. 22 is a spiritual number. That scripture is a spiritual number. So the ego is reasoning. There's none other on the boat, which means there's no other mind. It's only God. They've gone away from him, which means it's all one. God is all one. 23 is the death and rebirth, okay? And that's when the scripture, um, I might as well just read those to you as well because I put the, I put the uh, cipher in there. So let's go to uh, 24. That's as far as I went, I think. So 23, it says, How be it there came other boats from Tiberias nine to the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. So the death and rebirth, they ate bread, they took thought for their life, and the Lord had given thanks, which is a number 19. Okay, 19 is a number of, it's a death number, okay? Now, 24 means Jesus was not there, neither were his disciples. The ship that's moving the cargo, etc., look at carrying the cross, it's all symbology. It's all right there, the one and the nine. Anyway, enough of that. So, your identity, your birth certificate, birth, a birth, this is all maritime law, fiction. You're lost at sea. You're considered lost at sea when you have a birth certificate. See, you, you took a fall. You're, you're divided. You're charged as an enemy combat. You're in commerce, war. It's a shipping war. Dollars, cards, signatures. These are all contracts you're making. And you're reasoning for your life, which means you're guilty. That's why they have a guilty tax. Such thing. Look it up. G-I-L-T-I. -I. And you're in hardship, mostly, because you believe you're a material, mortal mind, consciousness of lack. Now, it says the kingdom is at hand. Well, what is in your hand? That's all of your treasures. Your wealth is stored on earth if you're living in this. It means that all of your wealth is stored on earth. That's why Malachi 3.10 is the most powerful scripture in the whole Bible because it takes all of your time, talents, treasures, and energy to put the money and all these contracts into your life that are sustaining you in the world of the five senses. And so what I'm suggesting to you is that the secret out is through the tithe, period. And I'm showing you all of the scripture and all of the cipher. So all of your treasures that are in your hand, when you let go of what's in your hand, God lets go of what's in his hand. So if you want to break the cube, if you want to step out of the prism, the matrix, the labyrinth of your mind through reasoning for everything that you think you got through hard work and labor and skill, you're reasoning for that, which means you're, you're the son of a descendant guilty mind. You were never engineered to provide for yourself. You were not engineered to provide for yourself. You're doubting because you're in the labyrinth of the 666. That's the who, what, when, where, why, and how through the inner, middle, and outer kingdom. And your fear equals when you broke the heart. You broke your heart. Man takes a fall. He goes from here, falls down here. He's considered lost at sea, dead at sea with a birth certificate. He's divided. He's charged an enemy combatant in commerce with war. He's putting contracts in place with all these things. He's guilty by reason. He's living in hardship. Get it? Holding his substance in his hand, which means he's standing under his wealth and his five senses. That's the physical proof that he doubts God. The physical proof that you doubt God is the inability to put God first in your finances and every other area of your life. Because that you're saying that you have a life outside of God, which means an affirmation that you're divided. So there you are. You're divided. That's your reality. That's your future. That's what you get to look forward to. But you can escape Babylon at any moment, and it's a heart condition. So you release your substance to God. You come into joinder with a man of faith that is reaching you as God, as your preacher. Now, the word preacher is important because you see the reach is reaching you. Who's reaching you? The P is a nine. Cite God's infinite hand of plenty now. So you want to make a spiritual contract 
to a divine source transmission that is reaching you by faith that bridges you to your correctness with God. That's why tithing is not giving to the poor. It's not giving to the homeless. It's not giving to people who you think are in need. It says in the ancient Apocrypha that it will be not well for you if you do that. Because that is not tying into faith that bridges you to the incorruptible. That is tying into need, which brings you into more need. If you give to the poor, you do it in secret. And you do it recognizing that you wanted to do it out of love, not because you're giving to need. Your faith contract can only be made in the moment of conviction. I don't tithe unless I'm convicted. So I wait until the moment I'm convicted, and I do it every week on Friday. And when I'm convicted, I find something that convicts my heart that God is the source. I'm honoring God. He's my treasure. And that belief and the faith that I'm tying into keeps me in covenant with God and keeps the prosperity as God's fulfilling law in my life. That is how a tithe is properly done. God wants us to only contract with him. This is the whole tithe. Me at my house. God wants you to be with God at God's house. Not off straying with all these other fictions. So step out of the covenant with Babylon. It's the world system. It's a worker ant system. That's what want is. Worker ant. W ant. And lack is a box. It's L with an act, which means to acknowledge. Okay? You're acknowledging. You're acknowledging. Okay? Fear. You're reasoning. Okay? The words. Words. You're drunken fools. They're all around you. The world is drunk. God is all in all. Praise him and pour out from that heart condition, that substance. So here's where I got these from. This is the Apocryphal Gospel of Truth. Jesus walks on water. It's actually from John. This is from John 6. So that's where I got that from. I, and, um, yeah, I'm going to tap back into you guys and see what you guys thought. So tell me what you thought. That was the transmission I wanted to give you guys. It all came together perfectly. So convicted. Okay, convicted means you have been reached in that moment of faith, Jay. It means that whoever is preaching to you has reached you. In other words, you are sold on the idea, like in your heart, not your head, as in you are ready to step into faith. You are ready to surrender your earthly treasure of your uh, transference of fear around all of your life that you're so worried about, including all of the money that you think it takes to sustain you, and give that up in exchange for what's real, which is God's presence, his all-fulfilling power. That's what it means. All right, so Abel got a revelation. Good, good. Luke Brown, amazing. Casey Clegg, I need to watch again. Julian, mind blown, amazing. We'll listen again. Liz, Kevin, thank you. All right, well, guys, I'm glad you guys like this. So this is what I do when – this is another way to tithe is your time, your talents, and your treasure. So when God asks me to give him my day, like yesterday, six hours to download all these notes, I was gone. Do you think I'm going to argue with God? I don't argue with God. When God says, give me your day, I've got something for you to give to my people. I say, it's yours. I haven't showered in two days. I didn't even shower yesterday because God's more important. So I hope you guys think it was worth it because to me, I got a lot out of it. God gives us knowledge. God gives us wealth. And I'd recommend you uh, keep this video and listen to it again. And it'll serve you. So that is the, uh, yeah, that's the meat right there. And, um, yeah. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, that was a lot of talking, but uh, I'm so glad to have you guys here. I'll see you guys next, let's see, Sunday. I'll see you guys on Sunday night for whatever God puts on my heart then. But for now, um, I'd recommend watching this a couple times if you can.
because I gave you a lot of symbology. I gave you a lot of cipher. I gave you some deep, powerful truths that not, not one in a million people know on this planet, to be honest with you. But I can back up all of it. I can show you where all of it is. I've studied all of it. And it's all right here in plain sight for you. And when you get this revelation, I promise you, you can never unknow it again. Once you know, you can never unknow it again. I'm Chris with Complete Essentials. Do you want to feel your best every day? Not sure what vitamins or supplements to use? Minerals are the currency of life. Minerals are the most important fuel our bodies require. Without minerals, vitamins cannot work. Shockingly, most people are deficient because our food supply lacks what we need. Discover the fuel your body needs to get moving again and reap the life-changing benefits. Our free Mineral Secrets course, Monotomia, is the answer. Health means everything, so go to monotomia.com and get the info now.